Hi there, this is Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. I'm going to show you today the latest addition to our BML line, which is a new product and it's called the Horns Phalanx. And um, we've got three uh, brass products coming out over the next couple of months, which are all recorded. The first of these is the horns, and then we've got trumpets and bones as well. And these are all six piece sections, just to give you that extra kind of welly that you can get from having all of those players playing together. Um, it's a great addition to the existing horns, which already pretty, pretty heavy stuff at the at full tilt. Um, but you'll hear there is a kind of timbral difference here and it enables you to get a kind of uh, really giant horn section going um, when you start to add in these. With the bones as well, um, we've got our, our bones phalanx, which will be coming out in the early part of next year. And also the um, bones library itself and our low brass library. Um, you've got a massive collection of trombones there as well. So this is really great for that kind of epic feel. So I'm just going to leap straight in and play the staccato. We've got um, the uh, ambient mics and the outriggers loaded up, and it sounds like this. So you can hear there, we've got, you've got full control of dynamics. It goes from... From fairly soft to, to uh, full on, and this doesn't go quite as soft as the actual um, horns A2 and the solo horn, obviously, in the horns library, the BML horns library, because this is really more geared towards um, the kind of fuller, uh, you know, full tilt sound. So here's our tenuto. And then, of course, Marcato. And then obviously it goes right down. A really great sound down the bottom there. So, um, wouldn't be complete without our cuivre, a real brassy sound, and that sounds like this. And then again, you've got. So you can really, um, really get that going. If you want a slightly longer release, um, you can obviously dial up, let's work it on to full, and you get this kind of effect. So you can hear there uh, the difference between having the releases dialed up and having them quite tight there. Good control there. Staying on the short stuff, we've got our rips. And then we've got our falls. So we have the longs lined up next. If you just have a quick listen to this lovely patch. Let's put the uh, releases up and we'll play some nice slow chords. So you can get a lovely choral sound from that as well, but obviously if you dial in the top layer. Then you've got that, um, that kind of uh, full tilt playing style as well. So um, I'm going to give you a quick blast of the different mic positions. So uh, quick listen to the staccatos with the close mics. And then if we put the deck of tree up. And then the ambience. And then finally the outriggers. So you can hear the uh, all the different mics you've got there. Now, performance palette. So in our performance palette, you've got two patches here. You've got the performance legato, and then you've got the uh, experimental fanfare builder. I'm going to switch back to our A and O mic so that you can hear the same balance that we had at the very beginning. With the pan with the um, normal legato, um, we've got various different kind of techniques in here to introduce uh, more kind of realistic blurred transition when you're playing quickly. So there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood, but I'll just give you a quick blast so you can hear what it sounds like.
So you can hear there, I'm playing in a lot of different kind of styles. Ignore the uh, graphical bug. I'm using a slightly older copy of Contact 5 at the moment. So um, this is a, an NI bug, which is fixed now. Um, the um, I'm using a different different kind of playing styles. Uh, we've got a four-way round robin when you're playing really hard on this. So you get a... a you know so you've still got your legato, but you've got... Uh, you don't get the kind of machine gun effect if you're doing a kind of repeating pattern of notes. Um, with the When you play a slightly softer velocity, you've got the normal kind of long attack that you've got on the same... Uh, same as on the longs um, in the other, the other patch. Let's go to the fanfare sculptor now again this is kind of still in our experimental stage but um, we're pretty happy with how this is sounding this responds to velocity in three different ways uh, with 1 to 99 that's your your velocity for kind of faster performing for the real kind of clusters of um, of quick notes with 100 to 110 you've got a kind of more normal staccato and we tend to use that for the starting note so if you're playing this in by hand just go back in and tweak uh, your first note in each passage so that that lands between 100 and 110 and that'll give you the best starting note and then from 111 upwards we've got the Mercatos. so so if I, i'll try and play something kind of fast it's a little bit difficult playing this kind of stuff on the keyboard but um, something like this So that's a kind of rough idea. Obviously, if you go in, if, if you're performing this stuff live um, and you're not um, the you're not one of the composers who likes to kind of draw things into the door, if you like to play stuff in on the keyboard, obviously there's going to be an element of unpredictability about this until you've actually gone in and tweaked the um, dynamics to kind of set it up correctly. But it really it's not that hard. It's very very um, it's very responsive to the to the touch, and it's kind of we're trying to make these things as easy as possible to get a really great sound and a really musical performance that you're controlling, but that doesn't take you know hundreds of key switches and stuff to do. So we think we're finding gradually honing in on the right balance between real controllability of giving you as many options as possible for sculpting, you know, uh, after the fact, and also giving you um, these kind of really playable patches that are really doing a lot of work under the hood to give you the best possible performance, um, but still keeping you in control of, of uh, what's going on. There is a, an element of control here with the dynamics. Um, so you can, you can get some dynamic into the performance as well there. Um, so that's the main section of the library, um, which is the main mics. Um, we've got also the stereo mixes which if I just pop into here and show you with the uh, staccatos. So you've got three, um, three kind of perspectives. You've got the uh, first, that first kind of suspect, uh, perspective, which is um, a kind of fine, fine brush, we call that. You've got that medium brush perspective, and then you've got the broad perspective, which is the kind of uh, slightly more epic, sort of feel slightly more room a little bit of a wider sound on that one um, and then of course with the uh, other final section here the alt mics uh, again we'll switch to staccato we've got our close ribbon mic sound which is that slightly warmer um, you know ribbon effect that you get slightly warmer than the close mic in the um, in the main mic section we've got our stage sound and then we've got our gallery, of course, the really distant. And that's a, a really interesting um, sound if we go to the Cuivre patch and have a quick listen. So it's a lovely sound there um, with that gallery perspective. And obviously you blend these to, mat to get the exact sound that you want for the piece that you're writing. So very excited to lock these uh, these last few sections for the brass into the into the kind of full palette of volume ones of our BML range. 
Um, we've got, uh, as I say, the trum trumpets and bones um, are currently being edited and tested, and they will come out in the first quarter of 2015. Um, and we've also got one more BML um, section, which is coming out at the end of this year. And uh, very excited to be pulling the, the full orchestra together. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.